it just was not good to have members of Her Majesty's forces saying that they'd seen things in the sky over British Isles that couldn't be tracked, we couldn't do anything about them, they were outside our control, it just did not give a good impression. So the, so the cover-up really seems to stem from that, that it was a cover-up of ignorance. Just weeks after the Smythe and Johnson incident, the Ministry of Defense issued its first formal report procedure for UFOs. All reports are to be classified restricted, and personnel are warned that they are not to communicate to anyone other than official persons any information about any phenomena they have observed unless officially authorized to do so. In March 1955, after two more years of UFOs making the news, the government issued further guidelines. These offered a list of rational and simple explanations for the various lights, shapes and objects that seemed to be getting the British public so excited. Its title, The Secret Intelligence Summary on Flying Saucers. Explanations ranged from present-day jet aircraft flying at great speeds and great heights to the more fanciful such as bright meteors and fireballs and meteorological phenomena like mock moons and mock suns. But these attempts to explain UFO reports may have backfired. A new breed of believer ufologists were convinced that the government had established its own X-Files on mysterious cases, but was stonewalling the British public. The UFO debate in Great Britain captured the attention of the public, the media, the government, and even the royal family. It was a very deferential society, and things the royal family were into, the public at large tended to take seriously as well. Throughout the period that the, um, the, the, the military were trying to keep a lid on the subject, there were various stories that were filtering through to the newspapers, to the gossip columnists, about Prince Philip's interest, about Lord Mountbatten's interest. He was tremendously excited about flying saucers, and he'd read several books, including Donald Kehoe's book, The Flying Saucers Are Real. He felt it was very arrogant to assume that we were the, the most advanced planet in the whole of the system. My father also had a, a slight ulterior motive in that it was the height of the Cold War when America and Russia were absolutely at each other's throats. And my father thought, well, maybe if there are visitors from outer space, uh, Earth will have to get on with each other if they're going to confront people from another planet. He then asked navigators of the ships and pilots of the fleet air arm and any RAF pilot he came across you know, to record what if they ever did see anything. Very often the descriptions did vary. I mean, there were the cigar-shaped ones as well as the ordinary saucer kind. And he, he took it very seriously. Lord Mountbatten's influence with one newspaper editor ensured that the flying saucer debate was headline news. But not only was the Queen's cousin a believer, her husband, Prince Philip, was as well. His equerry, Sir Peter Horsley, was often sent out on behalf of Prince Philip to talk to flying saucer eyewitnesses about what they'd seen. Following one extraordinary event in 1955, he began to believe that an extraterrestrial had already arrived in Chelsea. So where are we going with this country? I mean, what about the relationship between them? Yes. Peter Horsley was introduced to uh, someone called Mr. Janus, who he met one night in a, uh, in a flat in uh, Smith Street at Chelsea. He entered this, this room, 
was this character sat in a, in a high back chair. We couldn't see properly, it was sort of half hidden in the shadows. It's definitely X-Files territory. Duke of Edinburgh is very concerned about the Cold War. He claims that this wasn't an ordinary person. It was someone from another world and that this person was able to read his thoughts and that he knew an awful lot about flying saucers, about the, uh, the British establishment, and also that he wanted to meet the Duke of Edinburgh. What about UFOs? All the clues in the, the background to the story seems to suggest to me, anyway, that this was some kind of intelligence attempt to find out how much Peter Horsley knew about the subject of flying saucers, about how deeply Prince Philip was interested in the subject, and whether, in a certain situation, that any official secrets might be leaked out inadvertently in one of these... Um, situations that Peter Horsley found himself in. They don't amount to a great deal, really. Um, what he is interested in is uh, UFOs and aliens. By 1957, technological developments and an increasing interest in space exploration led the Russians to launch Sputnik, the Earth's first satellite. It sent shockwaves around the world. British people had been feeling vulnerable from the air for a long time, going back to the Zeppelin raids in the First World War. In the 1930s, they'd had uh, Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin telling them that the bomber will always get through. They'd experienced air attack in the Blitz, and uh, invasion from UFOs was part of the same uh, historical continuum. The launch of Sputnik seemed to trigger something far stranger than a few unidentified flying objects. A young woman called Cynthia Appleton was alone in a house one day, just messing about with her young children, and all of a sudden she heard some strange sounds. The atmosphere went slightly um, sulfurous, I think she, she said, and all of a sudden someone appeared in front of her. She was quite shocked, obviously, and she described this person as looking a bit like uh, a Greek god, yet he was dressed in a one-piece spacesuit with some form of um, goldfish bowl-type helmet on his head. This person made a prediction, he said, you're pregnant with a space baby. Whilst it will be born of your husband, will actually be spiritually belonging to the planet Venus. He predicted that he would be born on May 31st and that the baby would be seven pounds three ounces and he would have fair hair and he will develop into a leader of men and his name will be Matthew. She became pregnant shortly afterwards and the baby was born to her on June 2nd, 1959, who was seven pounds three ounces and had fair hair. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. join the space race. It became a regular occurrence to see pictures of Earth from space on our TV screens, and astronauts were becoming almost as famous as pop stars. Throughout the 1960s, UFO sightings continued to grow in numbers, up to 362 in 1967. At the same time, new religions and cults were attracting devotees. To